Hey everyone, Bernard here, I hope you're all well. Welcome to the Citizen channel and a City Present today. We have a City Present vlog as we do a big match preview, of course, of the game Manchester City versus Arsenal on the 17th of October, 5.30pm kickoff. We've got all our usual features today, including a look at our opponent's Arsenal, some history between the, our two clubs, the odds on the game, of course, with my free Just For Fun bets, uh, regular City magazine feature, and of course we'll have to have a, a look at You Are The Ref, just test your knowledge, and uh, Mr Chris Kavanagh tomorrow is the referee, and um, I won't mention who's on VAR, it'll depress you too much. Uh, yep, so we're going to look at another battle with Arsenal, aren't we? And of course another battle between Pep and Arteta, which has become a regular thing. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, please push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, and uh, make sure your notifications are set to public so you get to hear about these things. And please check out my playlist for city history stuff. And also, if you're into movies and TV dramas, uh, I do also little reviews on those as well. So there's a separate playlist. So if you're into anything like that, or you know somebody might be interested, please point them in my direction. It'd be absolutely fantastic. And please, all your comments. Are very very welcome and if you haven't got time to comment please thumbs up are fantastic i mean uh, i did get over 40 for one vlog the other week so uh, i know i'm not going to get that all the time but that was much appreciated nearly nearly a thousand views of uh, my uh, sort of leeds preview but i think i think it was such a such a look forward to game wasn't it that one the leeds game but uh, a little bit more on that in a moment when we're looking at the betting side with the leeds game it was a bit a bit a uh, bit abysmal on that front Right, you are the ref, here we go. We'll have the answer to this right at the end of the vlog. So, yep, uh, thanks to the board game based on the classic strip by Paul Trevelyan and, of course, Mr Keith Hackett to uh, put this board game together. It's an absolutely fantastic game. Good, all great fun. Right, the question today, even a picture of uh, Mr Shawnee Wright there, isn't there, Mr Shawnee Wright Phillips? Uh, fantastic image. Here we go. Have a, put, your, put your brains into gear for this one. On a wet day, a midfielder makes a rash challenge that ends in him sliding right off the field of play. He takes a few seconds to get back to his feet, then re-enters play just in time to receive a, de a defence-splitting pass made before he had crossed the touchline. He is onside and goes on to score. Do you give the goal? A. Do you disallow the goal? B. Award the goal, or C, caution the player for leaving the field and play without permission. I know, I think I know what I'd do, but uh, what would you do? So, he's left the field of play, he's, he's put in a rash challenge, he's not been fouled or anything, and he's ended up gaining an advantage, hasn't he? So, you know, he's gaining an advantage from the fact that he ended up off the pitch. And he, as I said, the uh, obviously the defender's probably not aware that he's slidden off the pitch or not even worried about him. They've just ignored him and he's onside. So it's an interesting one. That. Anyway, so answers at the end. Is he going to disallow the goal? Are you going to award the goal? Are you going to caution the player for leaving the field of play without permission? And obviously let the goal stand by the sounds of it. I mean, that option C, obviously. Right, Arsenal. Well, yeah, we're getting a bit... Uh, it's getting a bit... Uh, samey this isn't it with the Arsenal but the last time I met at the Etihad of course it was only 17th of June this year and the first game back after the lockdown wasn't it an 8.15pm kick off a very very wet Etihad it's been very wet in Manchester the last few days as well um, Leno the keeper was definitely Arsenal's man of the match he will be in goal I assume again tomorrow for Arsenal and he just kept City out time after time some, some bang average finishing mind you but uh, Mr Leno was certainly Superb, but we had our secret agent, didn't we? We had our agent blue, didn't we, in the Arsenal team? A, a certain David Louise, who we'll talk about in a minute, who's uh, obviously uh, brain fart and obviously uh, uh, sort of let sit in a couple of times, didn't we? We, we had a, a sterling great. 1-0 win thanks to Mr Louise in first half injury time so we went in 1-0 so that was pretty good and then on 51 minutes I mean yeah Mr Louise again he ended, ended up being down to 10 men didn't he Arsenal because uh, obviously Mr Louise had a, had a bit of a what they call it a brain fart isn't it where he and obviously KDB then made no messing from the penalty spot and we were comfortable then, and we did add a third Phil Foden added a third on 91 minutes I mean the game itself uh, it was 20 shots for City, 12 on targets. Three shots for Arsenal, zero on target. Talk about that in a moment as well. Uh, percentage possession, City got 68%, 32% to Arsenal. And KDB was thought by many to be the uh, man of the match that day. And of course, more recently, I don't, I'm not going to go into great detail on this. We had the very disappointing semi-final loss, didn't we, which... Uh, 
Mr. Arteta sort of stymied Pep's tactics, didn't he? Um, and Pep sort of summed up the game where despite we had 71% possession and restricted Arsenal just four shots, just four shots in the game, they scored two of them, we lost 2-0, so there you go. Uh, Pep said, we didn't make a good performance, we were not ready enough. If you don't play for 90 minutes in a semi-final, this can happen. We didn't play good, we are human beings. The opponent played good, sometimes it happens. The only regret is we didn't play the first half like we played the second one. We had to change the setup, but we couldn't do it. Yeah, squad wise, I was hoping we'd have a full, uh, a sort of basically a fully fit squad, but uh, it's looking a bit dubious, isn't it? And obviously, we had KDB reporting back early from his international duty. Um, I don't expect anything different from Arteta. I think he worked it quite well. I'm sure, unless Pep's been coming up with some great new ideas over the last couple of weeks, I think uh, Arteta's seen what Pep's been doing in the first few games. Uh, I don't think Pep's tactics are going to involve that much. I mean, it all revolves around City scoring, doesn't it? This is this is the problem. I don't think there's much wrong with City's tactics. It's just the fact we don't score enough goals. So if we take our chances and uh, we are tighter in defence, which hopefully we are now with our new acquisitions, um, with the creativity and score the goals, we've got a chance, hasn't it? But I don't think Jesus or, or, or Aguero are going to be starting the game. So... But all the players have to step up. It's all through KDB, and if KDB's injured, if KDB doesn't doesn't play, then it's up to other guys to step up and fill it in. I mean, obviously you're thinking of people like Fold, and you're thinking of Bernardo Silva, aren't you? To, you know, the more creative side of it. But uh, at the moment, we do seem to play everything through KDB, and that is a little bit of a worry. And of course, we do have secret agent, don't we? We do have Mr. David Lewis. There's a great image that I saw on the internet. I just put the captions in there as well. With uh, obviously. He, Hopefully he'll turn into a sideshow Bob, but he can play like prime France Beckenbauer, can't he, Louise? He's one of these players that can be absolutely superb and then look like a total idiot. So hopefully it'll be the sideshow Bob version of David Louise that turns up if he plays tomorrow, which I assume he has been playing, so I assume he will tomorrow. But you never know with him, and you never know what's going to happen with uh, with Sideshow Bob or sorry, uh, David Louise. Um, you know, say he'll probably turn into France Beckenbauer again tomorrow. My score prediction. Well, I'll give that. I'll give that later when I do the the betting side. I'm not going to guess at the lineup. There's too many, um, too many imponderables. I think in this lineup. To be honest with you, so I'll leave the lineup. I'll chicken out. I mean, if you want to leave yours in the comments, I'll uh, I'll have a laugh and a a poke fun at it. But no, no, no. My I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm going to leave the prediction of my start in eleven just for this week. I'll probably back with the Porto game, isn't it? The Champions League game in midweek. Yeah, I'll probably come up with something for that after we see who's back from injury and who's on the bench, etc. tomorrow. Uh, previously against Arsenal at our home at the Etihad at Main Road, at Hyde Road before that, we'd played 92 times and we've, because we've done quite well quite recently. We've now gone into the plus side. We've won more than we've lost. So we won 36, drawn 22 and lost 34 of the 92. So we're ahead now, which is nice to see. Uh, 137 goals for and 131 against. So not bad. So uh, let's carry on that tomorrow. Eh? Um, Pep's done well. I mean, again, I don't like this where they start bragging about things, but uh, he did okay when he played for Bayern Munich and Barcelona against Arsenal. Um, and he's done very well, obviously, for City against Arsenal, which the Manchester City website picked up on. And he's had eight meetings whilst the manager won seven and we've drawn one. So hopefully it'll be eight and, draw, and drawn one tomorrow. But uh, OK, based on the FA Cup semi-final, we can never be sure of anything, can we? Um, and on goals, goal difference, it's 21-4 and 5 again. So that's not too bad, is it? Arsenal's doing, how are they doing in the league? Well, they're, they're sitting fourth at the moment, a little bit higher than us. <laughs> We're struggling a bit, aren't we? Uh, they won three, lost one. Obviously, the only game they lost was uh, away against Liverpool. They got a plus three goal difference. Of course, they beat Fulham away 3-0, which on the base of it, Fulham looks as though they're going to struggle. Uh, a good home win against West Ham. But the interesting one was the Sheffield United game. Um, obviously, they beat Liverpool. And then he plays Sheffield United at home. And it sort of showed a difference outside of Arteta, perhaps. Obviously, certainly not the side that we see from Pep. I mean, it was certainly not a, far from a classic game against uh, Sheffield United. They sort of worked hard and gra ground the result out, to be honest with you. In the whole game, Arsenal had just six shots. Just six shots. But 
five on target. So this is it. I mean, if you think about the 2-0 uh, win over us in the semi-final, they only had four shots, but they were all on target. So that's where we have to perhaps take a page, you know, take something out of Arteta's uh, tactic book there. And we've got to start, we've got to start meeting those sort of percentages. Obviously, to, you know, six shots in the in the whole game isn't much to have five on target. You know, you've got to make the goalie work, as they say in the old days. At least if you make the goalie work, you've got a chance. So, yeah, it wasn't the greatest game against Sheffield United, but uh, say they ground out the result, and that's a good sign, and that's a good sign of Arteta as well. It's a little bit, perhaps a little bit different to Pep sometimes in, in his sort of how he thinks about games. There's a lot of talk about this new guy. I know nothing about him with with Arsenal, of course. Uh, is it party, uh, Mr. Party? Whether he'll come to the party? I mean, we've heard those uh, cliches, haven't we, and those silly things. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I'll come up with my score prediction but uh, yeah I don't think our set will do too much different to what he's, he's, he's been doing and our, and our problem is going to be scoring the goals isn't it? honestly and hopefully hopefully for once uh, our midfielders and our wingers will actually score goals if we've, if we've not got Jesus and Aguero up front again which could be a very very possible thing but uh, fingers crossed we might have uh, we might have a striker on the you know a sort of striker on the pitch anyway so uh, hopefully we'll look at that so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to the game uh, I think it will be a good game let me know in the comments what you think I think we've had some good games recently against Arsenal but uh, and we certainly can't take it lightly and we, it's a, a stage now in the season where we can't afford to drop points again can it we already dropped five we can't start dropping more points uh, it's a horrible thing to say isn't it but you've got to be a realistic and yeah, there's 100, 105 points or whatever it is to play for, but <laughs> we were saying that last season, obviously, and there was 90 odd points to play for, there was 80 odd points to play for, but uh, we've got to do something. We've got, we've got to go on a consistent run, I think. I said in my last uh, vlog last week, the Citizen Magazine vlog, I did. We need some consistency. We want. We need to go on a run. We need teams to be scared of us again. We need Arsenal to be scared, which they were certainly for that 15, 15 20 minutes at uh, Wembley. They they looked terrified. We need we need that effect on teams. Hopefully, it'll start tomorrow. Right onto the uh, odds of the game now, please. I don't condone gambling anyway, and please, uh, when the fun stops, stop and never ever gamble more than you can afford. Uh, some of these bets I would never ever ever bet on ever. It was just a bit of fun this for me for a little bit of extra in the game, and obviously the last time against Leeds, I was relying most of my bets were relying on plenty of goals. Unfortunately, that that didn't happen. So a total wipeout on on my bets last time. So uh, that was a bit of a washout. So let's hope for a little bit better this time. Right, the match odds: City to win, two to five on, which uh, is one of the lowest prices we've had at home so for a long, long time. Uh, the draw is seventeen to four, and an Arsenal win is eleven to two, which is not a bad price, is it? First goal scorer, you've got Aguero at three. Is he playing? I don't know. Sterling ten to three. He's always one of the favourites, and he's, he must be due a goal as well. Delaps at four. Uh, I don't think he'll play Delap, to be honest with you. It won't be Pep if he plays. I'd be very surprised. I mean, he might shock us, which he does sometimes, does, doesn't he? Uh, but you never know. I mean, I haven't said that now. I mean, I'm, I think, you know, why not? Please, Pep. He did, you know, if he didn't bring you, he didn't plan to bring you on against Leeds because of his substitutions he, he did. So why would he play him against Arsenal? I don't know. Anyway, Jesus is 9 to 2. Mares six to one, KDB seven to one, Foden seven to one, Torres seventeen to two, and Bernardo's nine to one. If you look fancy an Arsenal goal scorer, Aubameyang, Ob oh I don't never know how to pronounce his name, Ober Ober oh whatever his name is, is thirteen to two. Like as sorry mate, I'm about to scout. I still struggle. Ob Aubameyang, that's it. Aubameyang, yeah, I think that's right, isn't it? Oh, he's thirteen to two. Lacazette's nine to one. Nikita is ten. Nikita, Nikita. That's a song, isn't it? It's ten to one. Uh, both teams to score. That's interesting. Eight to thirteen for both teams to score, and six to four for not. But yeah, I have a feeling both teams will score tomorrow. And this is where my first uh, bet. I always, I always put a little bet on the correct score, even though it's probably the hardest to even guess of any any sort of. Uh, betting isn't it uh so the correct score 17 to 2 is it 2 2 1 to city 17 to 2 so that's my first bet tomorrow i'm just gonna have two points on a 2-1 win i'm hoping it'll be a bit more comfortable than that but i'll play safe on a 2-1 win so that's two points on that. Two nils, nine to one. Three one is ten to one. One nil and three nil are eleven to one. Four nil and four one at eighteen to one. If you fancied the draws, one all is eleven to one. Two two is seventeen to one. I don't imagine it's going to be three three or more. To be honest with you, nil nil is twenty two to one. And if you fancy an Arsenal win, you can get two one. 
at 21 to 1. That's not too bad. You get 1 0 for Arsenal at 25. That's a, there's a song in there, isn't there? That's 25 to 1. If it's going to end up like the semi final, 2 0 to Arsenal, you can get 55 to 1. You know, it may be worth having 50p on these. You never know, do you? And a 3 1 win to Arsenal is uh, 60 to 1. Half time, full time. This is where my second bet's going to come in. I mean, look at the odds on that. Uh, City at half time, City full time is 11 to 10. That was okay. But I'm going to go for a draw and City to win. So I'm going to go draw half time, City to win second half. It's 10 to 3. So I'm going to have a couple of points on that. So a draw and then City to win. Uh, a draw and a draw is 8 to 1. Arsenal and Arsenal is 12 to 1. A draw and Arsenal is 16 to 1. City and then a draw is 18 to 1. Arsenal and a draw is 21 to 1. Arsenal and a City win is 22 to 1, and City and then Arsenal to win is 40 to 1. So that's not too bad, is it, if you fancied that? Anytime goal scorers, yeah, I usually have a look at this, don't I? I've not done anything with this today. Sterling's 11 to 10, Delap 6 to 5, very, very low. Mares 17 to 10, Aubameyang 8 to 5, KDB and Folden are 21 to 10, Torres is 47 to 20, Lacazette. 5-2, to two. I don't think there's any real value in any of those to be honest with you, sometimes there's a little bit of value with, with like KDB and stuff, but there's certainly not tomorrow with that the under and over market this is where my third bet's going to come in so uh, this is where obviously I was, I was hoping for over 3.5 against Leeds to win some money and I thought that was a, a bang a <laughs> shoe in really, but uh, they just it just didn't happen did it unfortunately, so under overs tomorrow over 2.5 goals is 2-5 to five on, so that's not a great price but under is two to one, so so it's got to be a one all draw or one nil or nil nil. But uh, yeah, I'm going to the over three and a half. So I'm going to take a chance. Uh, over three and a half is even, so I'm going to go under three and a half because I predicted two one answer. So I should have really covered me covered myself really, shouldn't I? But under three and a half goals. So as long as it doesn't end up more than three goals, it's four to five on. So I'm going to go five points on that on the four to five on. So that that's my third and final bet. So uh, yes, yeah, so as I said, please only only gamble what you could afford. And no, I don't ever condone gambling in any way. But uh, good luck if you have a little bit of interest tomorrow. Right, on to our little regular City Magazine feature. What have we got to look at today? Well, Mr Stan Horn, if you're as old as me, you've probably watched him. I did watch him. Um, I'm not going to say he sort of uh, stood out to me when he did play. But uh, there's a little thing about uh, championship medals, isn't there? And uh, Matt Horn, his son, at Matt Horn 78. This means, And he went on to say, this means so much to Dad and the family. I think the Daily Mirror have been doing this. I mean, they do occasionally do something good. This means so much to my dad and family. Obviously, a movement to get any players who played five or more games a championship winning medal retrospectively. Obviously, it would mean home would be would uh, home would then be the first black player to get one. So there you go, and that's sort of gaining traction now for obviously for it to be put post dated to obviously before the Premiership etc. That anyone playing at least five games and would retrospectively, and the clubs just pay pay accordingly so the clubs are willing to pay the x hundred pound to get get it minted that's that sounds a great great thing and good luck uh, hope that's sorted out for uh, any USA he will be the become the first black player to get a, a league winners medal at charter d chartered tax uh, yeah it was all this uh, big picture I was going to do a little piece on this big picture but it's all fallen flat now hasn't it but uh, it was quite funny at chartered tax at the time he said uh, as Man United Liverpool unveil plans to reduce the Premier League to 18 teams football fans everywhere agree it would be much better without them so that was that was quite funny but it's not been knocked on the head but just an interesting thing on Facebook I do I do follow one friend, we follow each other, friend, or friend is it on Facebook, uh, Phil Banerjee, P-H-I-L Banerjee, B-A-N-E-R-J-E-E. -E. I mean, I always look at his match reports, I always have a good look at his match reports when he does them, and I, I save them for future reference for myself, you know, that whole little thing. And he, he had a great uh, thing on the big picture, which uh, I won't tell you about now, because obviously... Uh, but he always does uh, stuff like that. So please have a, have a look for him and give him a friend on uh, Facebook, Phil Banerjee. I think he writes for the King of the Kid Packs as well. Um, but obviously we were quite interested at the time to, to know what was going on, whether City were full in on this thing, etc. But it's now been kicked out, hasn't it? So uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. 
Patrick Roberts, yeah, Patrick Roberts is still, yep, yeah, he's still on the books. Patrick Roberts, he's now joined Middlesbrough on loan for the 2021 season. Uh, I have no idea why. Why don't we just sell the guy? I have no idea why he's why he's kept hanging on. I mean, he's obviously got no. What's the word? Um, he's always played safe, hasn't he? Or seemingly played safe, Patrick Roberts. So I, I have no idea why he's still on City's books uh, by any means. But he's joined Middlesbrough. Good luck to him uh, at the end of the day. But uh, he's certainly not going to make it at City. So, again, there's a lot of things go behind the scenes we don't quite know about. Is it? it was the same when we, uh, obviously, the, the selling of certain young players. And that caused a bit of trepidation, didn't it, last week? Or... You know how much we're getting for these players, but uh, yeah, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, and there must be reasons for Patrick Roberts for him still being on the book. So there we go, and it's a nice picture at Gabriel Jesus nine on his own Twitter account. Obviously, that kit is in. He commented with the, and it's good to see Gabriel. Be nice to see him back because I've never thought he was overly injury prone. So he was always a safe bet if Aguero was injured because obviously Aguero is a little bit injury prone. But uh, so it's a bit. Uh, it was a bit. Hopefully that'll st that'll stop. Hopefully it won't be a regular thing with Gabby. We don't need another player continually injured, do we? So hopefully it'll be it'll be fine anyway. Uh, Man City match shirts at Mark M M M A C. Yeah, he's uh, been putting together an auction to support the Man M C F C food bank. So it's a personally signed copy of the David Silver book El Mago. Full sale price donated to help them continue their fantastic work. So obviously, as I, as I was as I'm doing this, I think I looked last night. I think it was about one hundred and thirty five pound as as the most been been done yet. So if you're interested in that, I think that shuts at nine pm on Sunday. Um, so this Sunday the. 18th Sunday the 18th of October so if you want to support the food bank and bid for that book I say it was up to 130 a bit out of my price range I must admit but uh, 135 put a bit of a bit of a dent in my wallet but uh, yeah that's what it stands at it might be a little bit more now as I say I did that a few hours you know last night as I'm recording this in the morning so uh, have a check of that anyway so that's at um, Man City match shirts at Mark M M M A C R. I've put, I've sort of mentioned him before about these old City shirts and players shirts. Fantastic sites. So I'll give him a follow as well. I'll give him a. Is it a follow? I always get mixed up with the follows and the friends and who's who's and which is which. Yeah, Phil Foden. Phil Foden's made the twenty man shortlist for this season's European Golden Boy Award. They are the Golden Boy. Uh, Excuse for players under the age of twenty one was conceived and distributed by Italian newspaper Tutto Sport or Tutto Sport. But I'm not usually into these sort of things, but it's nice to see Phil Folden recognised and it will be concluded on the December the 14th. Who have we got on that list? Let's have a quick look. We've got Phil Folden, we've got Ferran Torres, he's also been nominated. Mitchell Backer, PSG, Eduardo Camavinga, Renes, Jonathan David of Lille, Alfonso Davis of Bayern Munich, Sergino Desta Barcelona, Fabio Silva of Wolverhampton, Ansu Fati of Barcelona, Ryan Gravenberch of Ajax, Mason Greenwood of United, Erling Haaland, Borussia Dortmund, Dortmund, well I think I'd give it him to be honest with you, but that's only because I don't know some of the others, Callum hudson Odoi of Chelsea, De Dejan Kluveski of Juventus, Rodrigo Real Madrid, Bukas Saka of Arsenal, Jason Sancho of Borussia Dortmund, Dominic Sizbozil, Red Bull Salzburg, Sandro Tonali of Milan and Vinicius Junior of Real Madrid. Hey, I got some of them right, didn't I? So that was fantastic. So I don't think Phil Foden will win it, but, uh, you know, it's nice to have him nominated anyway, isn't it? So it's always nice to get nominated, even though uh, he might not win it. Uh, if you're interested or you watch, I don't, I don't particularly watch myself i've watched odd snippets of it but it's too cityfied for me um but if you really watch uh you've got sean wright phillips and sean gold who are the special guests on the we're not really here match day show uh for the arsenal game and of course they also do the uh, if you check the city site there should be a, an arsenal virtual program as well as that's usually put out the day before so if you want, as you're watching this, it should actually uh, be available today, uh, on the Friday before the Saturday game. So just have a look out for that as well. But if you do watch, we're not really yet. It's okay. I mean, I, I love seeing people. I would love to have seen people like Sean Knight, Phillips, and Sean Goss. But I like a little bit more gritty, gritty content, and a little bit. I like people to to say if they're not happy, and it always tends to be a little bit watered down when it's run by the club. So that's uh, that's for the weekend's entertainment.
So that'll be fantastic. So that's uh, thanks for joining me for this. I'll obviously I'll be going to be back with a review of the Arsenal game. I won't rush it out Saturday night. I'll probably put it out Sunday morning. I'll do all my uh, paperwork, etc., and, and conclusions on Saturday night. I'll record Sunday morning, put that out Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, late Sunday morning, early afternoon. So if you're interested in that, please come back and watch that. And please check out my recent Citizen Channel. Uh, past and present vlogs include a look at the local a local derby in 2001 yeah it wasn't against United in 2001 we had to be happy with local derbies against someone like Macclesfield and this one looks at a local derby against uh, a Stockport County where we all, we're all from aren't we so that's out there and if you can check also I've done part two if you've not missed part one of the look back at 73-74 supporters handbook so that was a look back at stuff in there and things that happened during the season 72 to 72 74 so please that's out there as well if you want to have a look at just check my playlist for all the city history stuff right the moment you've been waiting for the moment you've probably fast forwarded to now you probably jumped to this haven't you, you probably ignored all my waffle that's been going on right obviously the question you are the ref what's the answer let's have a look at the question again on a wet day a midfielder makes a rash challenge that ends him sliding right off the field he takes a few seconds to get back to his feet then re-enters play just in time to receive a defense splitting pass probably from kdb this made before he had crossed the touchline he is onside and goes on to score do you give the goal so a do you disallow the goal b do you award the goal or c do you caution the player for leaving the field of play without permission i'm not saying whether we give the goal without one are we? so yes the answer answer is b there we are yes give the goal the player clearly did not leave the field of play deliberately he's not is he not going to get booked for doing a rash challenge he wasn't seeking to gain an advantage he got up quickly and re-entered the field immediately and he wasn't offside when he came back on he hasn't committed an offense interesting that if you look at that one he, has, he wasn't seeking so perhaps if he'd hung around a little bit perhaps that would have been gaining an advantage or the fact that he just got up and got on with it uh, probably worked in his worked in his favour, didn't he? If you think about it, because I I wasn't happy with that. I th I think he gained an unfair advantage, and I don't think the goal should have stood. But based on that, yeah, I can I can see the principle that uh, as long as he didn't do anything deliberately, it's it's fair enough, isn't it? Anyway, it'll be another one of those uh, of my uh, review of the Arsenal game, so I hope you enjoy that. Let me know in the comments. If you like the little You Are The Ref feature, and uh, it's, inter it's certainly interesting. So I, I do try and look for, there's, there's hundreds of questions. I try and look for some more interesting ones, to be honest with you. It's a challenger. Anyway, please, thanks for follow thanks for uh, looking in on this. Please check my links on screen now. If you can check out my website, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s, and board games. That's where I sort of try and earn a living so i can do things like this for you and i do love doing these things and but obviously if you can help us out by having a look on that that'd be absolutely fantastic and of course follow me on facebook or twitter i do check every couple of days and if you have to follow us and friends uh go on there and i will i will do that i will reciprocate with a follow or friend myself and obviously please i do post lots of stuff on there of interest to football fans and tv and movie stuff so please that'll be fantastic Right, thanks for joining me for this big match preview of Manchester City versus Arsenal. Come on, City, we can do this. I'm saying 2-1 to City, aren't I? I'll be happy with the 5-1, but I'm saying 2-1. So uh, let's hope, fingers crossed, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think, what you think the score will be, and uh, let's go. Let's uh, let's let's get this consistent run I've been asking for. Let's 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 start worrying teams again. Let's not. Have these teams coming to the Etihad and playing at home, thinking they can get something out of us? Come on, Pep, let's let's get up for it. Let's. This is your last season, you know. You know my opinion on that. Let's let's get up for it. Let's let's have a confident display and let let's let other teams worry about us and be scared of us yet again. And with uh, let's get the, let's get the goals. Let's get the, some goals and let's get some goals for a change. Let's have a striker on the pitch. If we haven't got a striker, let's have our wingers and midfielders making sure they hit the target. Never mind, just hit the target and let the goalie work. And uh, let's hope for a Mister David Luiz disaster class tomorrow. Eh? Not a master class, a disaster class. If he's if he's playing, that is, we don't know, do we? Anyway, thanks for thanks for joining me today. I'm going to do with the rest of the day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. Until we meet again on another Citizen Channel vlog, this is Bernard saying bye for now. Thanks for watching.